introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your personal background. Well, I'm, I'm Rob Way. Um, if you've seen the other interviews, perhaps you've seen my brother Ryan. Uh, we've both been here on the, on the ground since day one. Uh, my background, I, I was two years ago living, making 30 grand a year, cleaning carpets and doing other things, own rent, health insurance, all that jazz. And then in the one day, both me and my fiance lost our job in the same day. 24 hours later, we had packed all of our personal belongings into a van and we're driving to Arizona, where I began my battle with methamphetamines. Um, July 2nd, I managed to throw that against the wall, quite literally, and come back home. And I've been trying to fix my soul ever since. Uh, I, I've felt really horribly about myself and where I've been for quite some time. I haven't liked myself in years. And part of my re personal rehabilitation was to start getting out of the house and doing things, start becoming more part of the community. And when I, I first started getting kind of whiffs of this o OWS, I started checking it out online. And I, I went online and was being part of the uh, Occupy Seattle movement and, and kind of helping out online through that. And I found out about the march here in Tacoma. My brother and I showed up and we've been on the ground ever since. So we, were, we had planned to go to Seattle that day and found out about Occupy Tacoma and never left. Nice. So how long have you been occupying here? I have been occupying here now 21 days, save for a couple days where I've gone home just out of pure need of sanity and, you know, a, a good night's sleep on a mattress and a shower. I've been here every day. Now, if you were to explain the Occupy movement to someone who didn't know at all anything about it, how would you describe it? You got enough tape for that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a great analogy that I give to people. There are a hundred people in a room. There's a hundred dollars on the table. One guy takes $99 and looks at the rest of us and says, you can split that other dollar. That is a, a great analogy I see for what is the world economics as it is right now. It is one guy getting the lion's share of everything and leaving the rest of us to find a fight over the scraps. And personally, I'm tired of it. I, I've I've had to be everywhere from surviving on my own and having everything I need to scrounging and scraping desperately trying to get a hold of anything I can just to feed myself on a day-to-day -day basis. And I've seen the ugly side of the economics as it is now and I, I'm frightened for where our country may go if this continues. And I, I feel like even if my all I can do is make sure that the security guys have coffee in the morning, I'm here doing part of giving my part to the greater good. I know that as one grain of sand on the beach, I'm not going to be able to accomplish much. But because that one grain of sand is on the beach with 10 million others, we are the shoreline. We are where the water breaks. So it makes me feel good to know that I'm at least part of that. Sean had a great quote. It's better to stand up and fight with something than fails than to never be part of anything at all. Nice. It's an awesome quote. I loved it. So what would you say what would you say to people who, who uh, detract from the movement, who, who look at it and either misunderstand or just don't like what they see and just start uh, railing against it? It, it? It's all about education. My, my favorite phrase of this whole thing that's popped up is occupy your mind. Knowledge is power. The, knowledge is the one thing they cannot physically take from you. You can be rich, you can be have everything, you can have the three houses, you can have all that. And they can take it all from you. They cannot take your knowledge. They cannot take what you know. That is yours. And it's difficult to chastise anybody for having their own opinion. I, I try not to. Unless it is, it is an aggressive kind of attacking opinion, I try and listen to theirs. Because even a few people here in the camp with us have differing opinions on how things should be going. And although I may not agree, agree entirely, they do have good points. You know, X, Y, and Z is going differently than it should. And they have a good reason for thinking so. So I more than welcome differing opinions. I encourage people who think this is crap to come down. I would love to bounce some ideas off you. Even if you leave with the same opinion, you will have asked questions and gained a little bit of knowledge, at least from the inside. You won't be going off of just one or two sources of information. You will have come and talk to somebody on the ground here about what's going on and left a little more informed. You may still have the same opinion, but you have knowledge now. Now, I think you touched on this a little bit um, with that answer, but what would you say to people who support the movement, but because they disagree with, you know, Group X or Person X or just the way things are running as they are now, they don't get involved, what would you say to them? That's a good 
question. <laughs> um, I, involve yourself with more people. There, there are the, what, 35 we have here? Uh, you may not agree with any of the 35 opinions that are here, but you go to Seattle, you go to Portland, you go to Eugene, you go to any of these others, you might find somebody whose opinion you do agree with. And as much as I don't like to um, advocate this, uh, division amongst the occupies, if you find one Occupy works better with the way your vision of thing is going than another one, by all means join that one. Because you're going to be more help in that circle than you would be in another one. I'm not saying you wouldn't be useful, but you are going to be doing more good for the movement with a particular group of people than you would with another particular group of people. Like, as we've got going, we've got Occupy Tacoma, and we have also Occupy the Hood, which has been geared primarily towards uh, the, the um, the African American community and the hip hop community, whereas they would not necessarily feel comfortable coming down here and intermingling with the hippies. You know, the, their group is going to make them feel a little more included in what's going on than, say, our group would. Which, once again, I don't advocate division amongst the occupations, but I do desperately advocate inclusion in some case because if you don't feel included in something, you're not going to be included in anything. You're not going to put yourself out there. <laughs> hey. Sorry, can no, no, it's okay. you, you, you commented on the on the kind of you know the the hippie stereotype that a lot of people see down here. What would you say to people who see that as all this is? Well, I personally do not take the term hippie as an, as an insult. My mother, my first generation hippie, is sitting right behind you as we speak, and she is beyond proud of what is going on here. People call me a hippie. I tell them thank you. We, back in the 60s and 70s, they did a huge amount of work and a huge amount of good for a lot of people. So, in my opinion, somebody going by, driving by, going, you hippie, I'm like, thank you. You know, I, I appreciate the comment. The hippies are very calm, very, very passive people that, that are, may not have had the best on, are in practicality work, but on paper, their ideas worked beautifully. So, I would like to think that we are kind of taking what they started another, to another step. We're taking that next step as the next generation, the children of the, those people standing up, albeit we were raised with those, some of those ideals, we are going to push for that naturally. Uh, I believe it is our obligation as the next generation of those children to push forward our parents' ideas because they had a good, good idea. They had great ideas as to what should happen and unfortunately the system persevered longer than some of them were actually physically capable of doing this. So I feel a personal obligation as the spawn of these hippies to carry on that message and to follow through with what they started. But would you say this movement is a, you know, specifically a hippie movement? A... Not in the least, actually. Uh, there are the hippies here, but this is, we are the 99%. We are everybody. If you just take a look around, you've got punk kids, you've got rocker kids, you've got hippie kids, you've got uh, the straight edge, you've got the, the pot edge, you've got everybody here. So no, it's not just a hippie thing. Are we included? Are we here? Oh yeah. In droves. But we're not the only ones here. We're by a long, long ways. We have bikers, we have cops, and everything in between. So, no, we're not just the hippies here. So what, what would you, in your mind, like if you could have your ideal outcome of like how government could, should work, how, uh, how economics should work, etc. If you had your ideal outcome after, you know, all this, all, after after the after the movement, what what would your ideal world look like? Well, see now I'm I'm one of the strange few here that does agree with a lot of what the government is doing. They they may have oh excuse me they may have a flawed system, but sorry I just ate. Um, they have a lot of very good ideas that work great right up until money corrupted them. Um, politics being one of them. Until money took over and big money started making the decisions, this worked great. The, the elections and the people we were sending in, it worked out awesome. The, the, we had a democratic society right up until money took over. Everything is based around the almighty dollar. So if we can get that almost praying to money as a, as a deity, if we can change that outlook on people and get, get them going, okay, money is just a form of barter system. It's just something you use to get by with. It's not what runs things. And unfortunately, the society is based off the dollar. Everything you do is about money. I mean, even this right here, as much as out of the system as we try and be, 
a lot of our supplies are coming from Walmart, Target. You know, we're, we're getting a lot of support from Starbucks. I mean, it's unfortunate, but we are part of the system we are surrounded by, and we cannot help that. So my major goal is change in the belief that money is the almighty God. It, it's, it is not by a long ways. If we suddenly decided tomorrow as a group collective that money didn't mean anything, and everybody, close to impossible, but everybody decided that you could walk in and go, hey look, how about I give you this sack of potatoes for that beer? And the guy was cool with that, we could go back to the barter system tomorrow, I'd be all over it. I am all about working for what you earn. I personally pay my rent in slave labor, so to speak, sweat equity. I show up and I give them, you know, a few dollars off my food stamp card, but I've been repairing the house, I fix the porch, I mow the lawn, I do stuff like that to pay my way. And my roommates are all about that. They, they love the fact that I'm more than willing to, you know, do a little harder and work for my rent. And I would love to see a society as a whole go back to those kinds of ideals. I think it would be re return us to a much simpler state of living. And it's necessary right now. We need to slow down. We don't always need to be moving at light speed. Nice. Well, with this, with this movement as it is now in particular, and occupying here, what would you say is the best thing that, um, that has come out of it, that you personally pulled out of this whole thing? I, I like myself again. Uh, on a personal level, I I'm beginning to like myself again. And Sorry, I, I haven't liked myself in a long time, too long. And to be part of a greater good here, it, it, I'm beginning to feel whole again. So even on a personal level, if nothing is accomplished from all this, if we go right back to the way it was, I'm going to walk away from this a better person. And I think on a personal level, I needed to do that. It, it, it's going to, I don't want to say save my soul, it's going to repair it. It's been damaged and beaten and abused and being part of this beautiful thing that's going on around me with the community being part of it with all these I've met more people in the last three weeks than I've met my whole life and 99% of them haha have turned out to be awesome people and I needed that I needed to see the good in people again because for too long I've been seeing the ugliest part of humanity and I needed this that's just a personal level for me. I, I needed to see this. As a society level, uh, this is, uh, the quote from V was great. I am a man, but behind this mask lies an idea, and ideas are bulletproof. Beautiful statement, beautiful idea, because it is. You cannot stop this. This, this is never going to go away. The ideas that we have set in motion in these 21 days, two months with Occupy Wall Street, are never going to change. They're never going to go away. The ideas that have sparked this whole revolution of ideas is going to stick with us for the next 150 years. Where our my ch children's children will be fighting the same. F well, hopefully not be fighting the same fight, but the ideals will be in their head that they don't have to fall in line. They they can decide at some point that. Maybe I have a better idea. Maybe my ideas are going to work better for the masses than somebody else's. And I hope they will have the courage that we have to stand up and fight for those. Whether, you know, even somewhere down the line they're fighting against what the Occupy creates now. If that gets corrupted, I hope that they fight against it. I hope they do because they have the knowledge to know that when things go bad, it's time to fight. It's time to stand up for who you what, who you are, what you believe in, and who you think the society should be. Anything, anything you want to add? Occupy your mind. Knowledge is power. It, it's and community is power too. Without your community, you you are going to be a very lonely person. Speaking from experience, if all you do is hide in your apartment and isolate yourself from the world. That's what you're going to get is isolation, and that will drive you insane. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.